Okay, again, thank you very much for joining us today in this webinar. Um, well, it's a series of webinars where we're going to discuss topics on te technical analysis, uh, fundamental insights, nuances of the financial markets, including algo trading and arbitrage. So we look to uh, bring you a webinar on these topics every few weeks. And um, we'll email you and, uh, with the dates of the next webinar. But as promised in this webinar, what we're going to talk about today is market harmonics, which is a very interesting topic. We're also going to discuss how uh, qualified participants in this uh, webcast uh, can access our strategies. Um, and this means uh, any traders uh, or our traders will be able to trade on your behalf using our strategies. And you can also watch and learn how we can uh, we trade by following us in real time. I also want to introduce you to uh, JC07 and JC05, which uh, are our two strategies, and we'll have a look at the performance of them. So let's get started. So for those who don't know us, Jackson Capital is a foreign exchange investment management company based in Melbourne, Australia, and we're um, and we specialise in a quantitative research-driven approach to FX. Uh, the big takeaway here is our company brings together a pool of, or a wide pool of people and skill sets, all of whom are focused on the performance and management of our funds under management. So for those who do know us, Jackson Capital has a number of proven traders and analysts from around the world. Uh, who all contribute to the ongoing development and um, trading of the currency market. And our clients uh, have a unique uh, access to learning and trading with them. Uh, I will discuss how you guys can get involved later on in this webinar. So, however, uh, there is a lot to get, go through, uh, so let's get started. So before we start on Fibonacci, it's important to note the beginnings of a divine proportion which creates the basis of natural occurrences and has uh, been adapted by man to do design and cal calculate different geometric shapes. The golden ratio, uh, as taught in you know early grade school, if you can remember, uh, was brought forward by Pythagoras. It's a ratio of 0 0.618 and can be witnessed in natural formations such as the swirl of a cyclone, um, galaxies, um, cross-section of seashells, you know, unfolding ferns, etc. Um, so we can also see the proportion in simple geometric shapes. Let's have a talk about that. Let's, uh, let's talk about Leonardo Fibonacci. He was an Italian math mathematician born in 1170 AD, who modelled the population growth of rabbits. Uh, this is now called the Fibonacci sequence, and it's a sequence of numbers from 1, uh, 1 is down the bottom here, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, 34, so on. So basically what it is, is a sequence of numbers where the, each successive number is the sum of the previous two numbers. So 1 and 1 equals 2, 1 and 2 equals 3, 2 and 3 equals 5, 3 and 5 equals 8, and so on. The sequence of numbers can be interpreted as any given number above 13 is an approximate multiple of 1.618 by dividing the larger number in the sequence to the smaller number and 0 0.618 by dividing the smaller number in, this, in the sequence into the next number in the sequence. As seen here, there are a number of ratios which can be derived from 0.618 and it's reciprocal 1.618. So you've got the primary ratios, which is 1, 6, 0.618 and 1.618, then we get the primary derived ratios, or the derivatives of that, uh, 786, 886, 1182, and 1272. And then we get the complementaries, which are 382.5707, 1414, 2236, uh, 2, 2, 3, 6, et cetera. Okay? And they're all 
uh, have a relationship back into the 0.618 and 1.618. Okay, so of course not all of the ratios should be used or well I don't typically use all of those ratios. Uh, because you can see on the on the left right hand side here, <clears throat> it, you get a lot of numbers, and you can you can pretty much curve fit it. Okay, so it's prudent not to curve fit. So what we'll do is we'll use the most commonly used ratios. And we've got to remember that trading is more of an art than a science, and we want to uh, follow the herd. So we'll only use the ratios that are used in bold over here. So, uh, well, 0, uh, 382, 0.5618, uh, 1272, 1618, 2618. We will be using uh, 786 uh, quite a bit as well. That should be in bold and maybe 2, okay? Okay, so let's talk about geometry. Patterns in trading have been happening since the start of market records and uh, they are a true reflection on the psychology of the herd. The, identif the identification of price patterns over time have given us the ability to predict high probability setups uh, to enter for profit. Pattern recognition gives the trader um, the ability to understand possible reversals in the market conditions. Uh, some of the best traders that I know use price and time patterns as their primary source of trading while utilizing simple indicators as to just to confirm the entry. In saying that, most indicators are lagging. So if you get oscillators, um, uh, moving averages, etc., um, they will all be lagging because they're taking what's already happened in the market and just uh, using them as an algorithm to uh, interpret the market. So what we want to do is we want to get a leading focus in the market. And certain price patterns have an excellent prob probability. Typically a leading pattern will be uh, centered around support and resistance levels. There are many theories on patterns, which include classical technical analysis, head and shoulders, rounding top and bottom, ascending and descending triangles, double tops, double bottoms, and you know, to more complex butterfly, Gartley, three drive, and Elliott wave patterns. And a recognition of uh, these patterns using uh, patterns using Fibonacci price retracements and extensions are used to identify these particular shapes. But before we get started, a trader needs to understand uh, the underlying uh, primer to market behavior. Price and time continually create versions of, this, uh, of a simple triangle. Take any low and draw a line to its high, and then connect the two, the new line to the previous high, where a triangle is formed, as you can see in this in the slide. Triangles equal in size are symmetrical, and more commonly, unequal in size are asymmetrical. Once the identification of one triangle is achieved, then we can copy uh, an opposing triangle along to the next peak or trough. These shapes uh, form a basic pattern from peak to trough, to peak to trough, through to, oh, to through to peak, and then to trough again. And I'll I'll go to a chart in just a minute and um, and show you what I mean by this. So there are, um, here we witness an ABCD pattern uh, and uh, it's possible to see the formation throughout any market. So let's go over to a chart and have a look at this. Okay, so here we've got the Aussie <clears throat> over the last month. This is a one hour chart. 
obviously the the markets are fractal in nature. So if you go if you move down into into five minute or fifteen minute, half hour, whatever, they will still show the same sort of uh, behaviour. Let's have a look. <clears throat> what we've got, we've got to move to the upside. So what we can say is we can say this here is A. And this here is B. So that we've gone from peak to trough. Oh, sorry, from trough to peak. Whenever we draw a Fibonacci, we always draw from the top from the one peak to the next peak. Okay, we don't draw a Fibonacci inside. Okay, drawing it inside is not going to help you too much. We go from one peak to the next obvious peak, or from one peak to a trough. Okay, so from a trough to a peak, or a tr uh, peak to a trough, either way. Okay, so we've got A, B, and we've got B, C. And they'll see. Then we can join these two together, and there's a triangle. I'm sure not many of you are going to dispute with me that that's a triangle. Then what we can do is we can find the relationship there between that and the next one we can put up here D. Okay. We can say from trough to peak. Okay. And we'll draw from this peak to this peak. And we've got a we got a, a another triangle. They look similar. So we would say that they are symmetrical. Nobody disagrees with me. Okay. Can everybody see that? Okay. Beautiful. <clears throat> Let's go back to our slide. Once we have established that this is possible uh, to find similarities between the three legs A, B, uh, C, and D, in other words, we want to ask a question, what is the relationship between A and B to C and D? Also, is there a relationship between A, B and B, C? The answer to these questions is yes, there is a relationship. But first what we need to do, I'm going to digress a little bit here and we're going to talk about oscillations that occur in price action throughout the market. We call these market harmonics. To completely understand market behavior, we first need to conceptualize that all objects and natural occurrences have inherent resonant frequency. Vibrations or harmonics can be described as a component of a periodic oscillation whose frequency is an integral multiple of the fundamental frequency. So let's break this down. We know that the market oscillates from peak to trough to peak to trough. And these oscillations are fractal, meaning if we start with a large time frame, we can see the oscillations. And if we zoom in on a smaller uh, time frames, we can see the oscillations occur again. Or we can see the oscillations within the larger time frame on a smaller time frame. Okay, so there is there a relationship between these? <clears throat> An expression of these oscillations of vibrations is the observation of stored energy. Uh, for instance, if a long-term sideways or range-bound market is observed, it can be assumed that a breakout will occur at some point. Or if a consolidation of price takes place, a sharp rise or fall in price can similarly be expected. So this gives us a clue to what harmonic number of a particular market can be. If we observe the occurring, uh, a reoccurring size of a swing, 
on a favorite on one of our favorite time frames, then we can average out the, the distances of this swing and find the harmonic of it. This slide here illustrates uh, the harmonic of the AUD USD on a 377 tick chart, um, where we can take a Fibonacci uh, and derive derivatives and multiples of this number and witness movements in particular in a particular direction to equal the distances. Okay, so what do I mean by that? If, if we take all the legs that we can find in a particular time frame, then we can find what its resonant frequency is. And for this particular, for the Aussie one hour chart, or the 377 tick chart, it's 55 pips, okay? If we take derivatives of that 55 pips, then we can estimate what the pullbacks are. So let's take 55 and multiply it by 0.618. So we can see these legs here, approximately 55 equals 67. This one here is approximately 52, and this one here is 52. Okay, 52, 52, and 67. That one was a bit longer, okay? And 55 multiplied by, which is the average, multiplied by 0.618 equals 34. So we look at the retracement, 38. This, this is a shorter move down here because this is a one, obviously a one-to-one, -one, so which is 36. This move up into here, which is 36, close to 34, okay? So we can see that it has um, a harmonic to it, which is a derivative of its fundamental frequency, correct? All right. So once we, now that we know that, let's talk about the AB equals CD pattern. What's the relationship between AB, C and D? And also what's the relationship between AB and BC? All right, let me just go back over to a chart. Here we go. Having a look at this move to the upside, I'm just simply on MetaTrader. If nobody knows how to do this, if you double click on a line to, uh, and you've, you know, you've double clicked on it, you can hold down control and grab it and it'll copy the line, okay? Which is the same distance. Okay, so now that we've got a distance between A and B, uh, we've got it now, it's the same distance between C and D. And we can see that, that we've got the end point of the trend close to the top there, don't we? Okay. All right. Let me just put in my um, numbers again, my letters again, so that we don't all get confused. So bear with me. All righty. Okay, so what we can do is we can say, okay, well, I'm going to try and usually buy the pullback. The, the theory would be that this here is our last high on the down, down move, on this down move. Okay, this is a high. As soon as, we, as soon as we've broken this high, as soon as we've broken that high, we would say that there'd be a trend change. Hopefully nobody disagrees with me. So let's get rid of them. Let me just bring this in here. So this is the last side. Oh, it's been broken. Okay. It's acted as it's been broken. We've moved through it. It was uh, resistance up here. Now it's acting as support. Okay. So our buy zone will be in this region in here, won't it? Okay. So let's buy the pullback of the break of the trend, and which will be our C point. Okay, and where are we going to put our target? 
we're going to look for our target to be at the D point, which is a one one to one relationship. Okay, one to one being A B equals C D. Okay, now how do we find that D point? Well, you can do it the way that I just showed you, which is taking that, double clicking, and then moving it across. Or what we can do is, is more, a little bit more sophisticated way of doing it uh, is take its reciprocal. And let's talk about reciprocals. Okay, so each each time you take a Fibonacci measure of uh, the chart, you can see that, uh, or if you calculate its reciprocal, its reciprocal will typically be a distance which equals a b equals CD. Okay? So the reciprocal of a 0.5 retracement on the AB leg to C will be uh, a projection of 2 of the BC leg to D. If I'm confusing you, that's okay because it's hard to, hard to conceptualize unless I show you. Let's go to a chart. Okay, so let's write in our, keep writing these in, or maybe I should put them in there first. A, B, and C. Okay, so let's take a Fibonacci. We go from the bottom to the top. We look at our retracement. Our retracement is around about the 50%. Correct. C is, does everybody agree with me that C is about 50% of the ABC, AB leg? Yes? Okay, so let's have a look at the relationship between B and C. If I take now take a projection, which is from B to C, right? Two. Correct? So if we go, if we take... If you pull out your calculators, everybody, pull out your calculators and go 1 divided by 0 0.5 equals 1 divided by 0 0.5. It's 2, right? So a reciprocal is 1 divided by the number, isn't it? So let's have a look at it. Let's look, have another look at a different function here. Okay. On the slide here, we've got 0 0.5, and there's our two point. Yeah, it did run a little bit higher, but it's a, that's a nice way, nice place to take your take your profit. It did. We were look at looking at profit takers in around this area, but it did have a last hurrah in there. Okay, before it dropped away. Have a look at another one. Here's a 382. The reciprocal of 382 is the 2236 or the 2618, which had ended up being the 2236. Okay. All right, let's go back to a chart and have, an, have another look at a different, different one here, just to prove it. Here we've got A leg to B leg. Okay. B leg, C leg. Let's take our Fibonacci of this. A, B leg, we've got the 786. What's the reciprocal of 0.786? Go to my calculator. 1 divided by 0 0.786 equals 1272. Okay, so let's have a look at what the Fibonacci of the BC leg is. 1272. Everybody can see over here, 1272. Is that correct? Okay, great. Now let's get on to market patterns. So that's the AB equals CD. Okay, the Gartley 222 pattern. H.M. Gartley, Gartley's book, printed in 1935, was called Profits in the Stock Market, and it describes patterns and technical analysis techniques um, 
throughout it. However, the standout pattern illustrated was on page 222, hence the name, uh, Gartley's, Gartley's 222 pattern uh, includes the AB equals CD pattern and expresses the classical uh, retracement area which rises to an overall trend um, continuation or reversal. Today's vari variation of the pattern includes point X uh, to uh, the shape in which the AB equals CD legs are within the boundaries of the XA leg. Okay, let me, let's go over and have a look at that. Okay, so let's have a look at what the rules are for the Gartley uh, um, 222 pattern now. Point B and D cannot exceed, exceed point X. Point C cannot exceed point A. Okay, so point uh, B and D, so this is XA. So B needs to be inside and D needs to be inside point XA from point XA, okay? So it's, it's inside. So typically what you would be looking at here in this area is a cell, okay, for the continuation of this trend, the downside. Sometimes you'll, you will get a retracement, some sort of retracement there, but you won't get, sometimes you'll get a continuation to the upside because this could be a reversal in here. Um, 0.618, B from XA, so here, point B needs to be uh, point six, uh, uh, you know, between the point five and six one eight of XA. Ds should be at the seven eight six of XA, so you can see here the seven eight six of XA, and the one two seven two, uh, or the six point uh, six one eight of BC. This pattern here, AB equals CD. That's pretty much it, okay? Typically a great trader or a good traders will be able to see this without, without having to draw Fibonacci's or remember the rules. You've got to learn these rules, right? You've got to know exactly what a, all of these patterns look like off your cuff, right? So you can identify it without you know, having to draw, uh, t draw tools all over, the, all over the page, okay? There's another Gartley pattern there. You can see we the B let, uh, the B point was uh, 618 of XA. We've got uh, 786 over here. Obviously, that was a weekend gap. Okay, we did have a very deep retracement from the B uh, the BC leg in relation to the AB leg. Right, typically you will probably want that a little bit higher, but uh, that's okay. It's still as long as it didn't break the um, that A point. Okay. All right. Okay. Let's talk about the butterfly pattern. Butterfly pattern is almost the same as the Gartley pattern, except the C D leg extends beyond point X, and usually to the 1272, and no further than the 1.618 extension, XA. This can also be uh, seen as a divergent signal. Well, this could be like the last wave of an Elliott wave. So this could be a definite reversal signal, okay? Have a look at an example of it. AB equals CD lend, leg, or the CD leg extended move to 1272 or the 618, 1618. Again, the AC relationship does not break. The A point is usually between, you know, uh, 382 to the 886. D point from BC is between 0.618 to 2618. Okay, so this relationship. There's another example of it. We've got the, we've got the down move, which is XA. We've got up move from A to B, 
AB here, as soon as that goes to 618, pulls back and then does not continue downward, but it goes upward, then we can see that they, this is our pattern starting to form, okay? When you get this type of relationship, the relationship between this A pattern, this A point and this C point, okay? So does it fall between the 38C, does C fall between the 382 and the 886? It does. It's 0.618. And we've got the extension all the way up, up into here, ran a bit further uh, than this um, 1272, went to the 11, uh, 1414, which is still cool, but ultimately it stopped right up here at the 1618. We had a reversal. Okay, so that's a great reverse cell, cell point up in here. If you see this, it's a cell point. Okay, variations of the Gartley and the, bat, uh, and the um, butterfly pattern are the bat pattern. Is, is one of them is a bat pattern and the other one's a crab pattern, which I'll talk about the crab in just a minute. Typically, the uh, bat pattern is, uh, you know, falls within the relationship of what the um, the Gartley pattern is. However, we've got the D point extends right up past the seven eight six, okay, but it still doesn't break the X point up here. Okay, this relationship. If we drew a Fibonacci from this point here down, right, we would we probably find that that's the one two seven two still still rings true if you see a trend you know what you can witness here as well is there's a trend line running all the way through there okay so using the trend lines as well would you will you give you um, um, confluence an area of confluence and for those who don't know what I mean by that confluence is an area where there's multiple points of support or resistance the more points you've got of support and resistance, the higher probability the trade is going to be. If you've got a trend line, add it on with a, a pattern, add it on with maybe pivot points or moving averages, then this will be a strong leading indicator. There's a buy pattern, okay, so point D is uh, quite deep in relation to XA. So X at this time, X is down here this time, A is up the top, this is point D here. So we've got a deep, deep um, XA relationship. Okay, let's talk about crab pattern. Crab pattern is the same as the Gartley pattern, but we've got an overextension of the D. Okay, so D of XA Know, has usually run a little bit further past the 1618. Okay. That's a buy. You can see that it's clear buy in there. What we've got, we've got a downtrend, then we've got all the buyers coming in, really wanting to come in because we're too cheap. Then we've got the last hurrah, the last move. Then we've got divergence in here. Here is divergence on a wider time frame. This would be divergence. Okay. However, on this time frame, this will act as divergence, and then we've got the reversal. Okay. They've, they, what what's happened is that we've got a downtrend. We've got a break of this break of this last high. Traders wanting to come in to push it higher but it's just fallen away, maybe based on some news, continuing news, uh, or an open of a session, and then um, and then it's really taken off onto the upside. Okay, so where would we take our profit? This is the same image as the last one. Where would we take our profit? Run a trend line from AC. And you take your profit over into this in this area. Okay. Trend line across there. Or take half your position off and then keep it keep it running. 
if you've got an inclination that you've got strength in it. All right, let's go back over to our chart. All right, let's have another look at what this pattern is here. You know, we've got AB there, and we're having a look at the relationship between, sorry, XA, I should say. Sorry, let me put in our markers. X. A. Okay. We've got a retracement here to C. To our 382. Everybody agree with me? Hopefully you do. And we've got to move back to the C point. Okay. And we want to have a look at, oh, sorry, that was B. Sorry, guys. B, 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 B. That's a B point. Here is our C point. Okay. Does this C point break our A point? Make a straight line. No, it doesn't. Okay. So what we're going to do, we're going to draw this down to here. So we're going to call that our A point. Now, I haven't traded yet. I'm just watching this unfold. Okay, so let's say that we're up to this point here. Let's say that we're up to this point, right? I'm just I'm just witnessing this at this at this point in time. I might have taken a long trade there, looking seeing that 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 is a double bottom, okay? But looking at here, this is our top on B point B, right? We've got a break of this top. Okay, what I'm going to do as soon as we start breaking that top, I'm going to start going long. Okay, so what I can do is I can take the rest from here, I can take it all the way up. So I'm going to assume that that's going to be a Gartley pattern now. Okay. So we're looking for point D. Okay, so we've got our relationship there. A, B, C, D. Here is our D point and our little complete our wings. There you go. Okay. So there's our there's our point there. Okay. So if I'm gonna sell in this sell in here, okay, then I would look to take my profit here. Yep. They might run a little bit further, but hey, you know, I've still collected this move, which is uh, 106 pips. Okay, so let's look out, look at, let's have a look at, see what else is supporting our theory here. Okay, so if we zoom out to a daily, we take move. We, we all know that we've had a, a we've had a wedge or a pennant been going on in the uh, Aussie dollar the last few few weeks months actually zoom back down and we've got our XA leg and look confluence right confluence of our the top top um, resistance line of our pennant. And the 786 in the same thing, in the same move. So then we've got a confluence of those two resistance areas. And what we'll do is we will be happy to take a sell there. High probability sell. Everyone agrees with me. Okay. Failure signals. Number of sign a number of clues can be witnessed to give rise to possibility pattern, which is imminent. And, have, and fail. These include long bars into the new point or uh, shows an aggressive sentiment in one direction. So maybe you just want to take some time, wait for, wait for it to consolidate and then make its reversal. Don't just be selling in, into a long bar. 
Um, the other one is, is, you know, end of sessions, the quietening of a market, uh, maybe into fr late Friday night, those type of things. If you witness a pattern involved, you probably might want to not want to take it. Identification or confirmation signals is a reversal uh, pattern to do with your um, your uh, candlesticks, you know, tweezers, dojis, morning stars, etc., evening stars, those type of things. Maybe you want to couple that with a, a cross of a stochastic. Another good thing, harmonic levels to do with um, to do with uh, moves in the market. The sharper the move, typically on the open or news releases, the sharper the move or the more aggressive the move, the shallower the, the retracement, okay? You can see here in this one on the side, we've got a hard move to the upside, okay? Take our Fibonacci from the low to the, to the peak, we only come back to the three, uh, two, three, six, okay? So if we've got aggressive moves, obvious moves in one direction, then we want to take shallow retracements, okay? You're not going to see sentiment moving because of a news announcement in one direction um, because of, you know, breaking news or consensus which is out of, out of order uh, and it retrace all the way back to the 618. That's just not going to happen, all right? What you'll see is you'll see a move, consolidation over time during the closed session hours or the European closed session hours and then a continuation when they wake up the next morning when they see it hasn't retraced, okay? All right. All right. Hopefully you've got a lot out of that so far. Let's quickly just talk about what we do. Um, and how you guys can get involved in it. Our products provide a new paradigm for private investors to access sophisticated currency products without the incumbent knowledge, experience or time required to trade the complex and fast-moving currency markets successfully. Uh, you, as a, as a client, if you, um, if you qualify, uh, uh, have control, flexibility and transparency in the investment without having any to worry about any of the work involved. An experienced investment manager uh, trades your individually managed account on your behalf while you watch live so you can learn from it. Uh, Jackson Capital offers a portfolio of dynamic and uh, high growth um, currency investments. Um, and it has the potential to generate uh, positive re returns in both rising and falling markets. Jackson Capital also uh, provides true portfolio diversification with low correlation to standing investments. So if you've got property or shares, uh, we, are, uh, we have a negative correlation to such investments as we are uh, speculative traders using very unique uh, trading uh, systems. Um, so we're negatively correlated to those standard investments. So what that can do is smooth out your uh, downside risk in those standard investments. Jackson Capital aims to achieve net return of excess of 20% per annum, which we have done. Uh, of course, uh, though there can be no assurances that the MDA will achieve its uh, investment objective. However, you can see from the results yourself that we have done it. Uh, October in JCO5, we made 2.54%. In October in JCO7, we made 0.59%. Um, so we've been treading water there. Year to date in JCO5, we made 39.45%. Year to date in JCO7, 57%. One year um, to the end of October, 50% versus JCO7, one year, uh, 69%. Three year per annum, we don't have enough data for JCO5 for the three or five year per annums, but uh, three, three year per annum, 41% for JCO7 and 36% for J, uh, five years for JCO7. So since inception, we've turned over in JCO5 114% and since inception on JCO7, we have turned over 650%. JCO7 has been going for six years to the day, pretty much. 
Um, JCO5 has been going for about two years. Okay, standard deviation in JCO5, which is the measure of its volatility, is 5%. So there's less uh, volatility in the equity curve for JCO5. Uh, JCO7's volatility is about 10%. So we can expect 10% uh, drawdowns, fluctuations on the equity curve. You know, that's pretty normal. We've got verified results in uh, JCO5, our multi-strategy. We've got audited and verified results in JCO7, okay? We will look to be getting JCO5 audited soon, uh, but we don't see it necessary at this point. Fees and costs, if you want to get involved and if you, um, if you, um, uh, if you qualify, uh, we take a performance fee only. We do have a small spread winding in there to keep the lights on, but we take a 30% uh, performance fee. So if we don't make money for you, uh, we don't make money. So our uh, interests are aligned with yours. There's no fun, no uh, subscription fees. There's no entry or exit fees. There's no redemption periods uh, like what you would find in managed funds. Okay. So what we'll do is we'll send you a video. Get your questions ready, guys. If you want me to go back through any of the um, bits and pieces of market harmonics, get your questions ready um, while I just finish off here and type them, type them into the chat box. Uh, we will send you a video of this recording, so don't worry, okay, if you didn't get any of it. Um, I do recommend a book for you guys to read. It's called Market Harmonics by Scott Carney, C-A-R-N-E-Y. Um, he's got two volumes there. You pretty much read the first volume. Volume one is probably the one you want to read. Volume two is more his theory, which has got credence, but you don't have to buy it. Uh, Scott Carney, Market Harmonics is a good book. Um, our next webcast that we're going to do, lecture two or discussion two, whatever you want to call it, will be on market fundamentals, things like how to trade the news. Uh, as we as we do trade the news, my one of my London guys trades the news and he does very well out of it. Um, and that's in JCO5. He contributes to JCO5. Uh, macro fundamentals, we'll talk about them. Uh, we'll talk about some commodities, uh, relationship uh, commodities to the FX market, uh, jobs, things like non-farm payroll, etc., uh, money flow between countries, uh, interest rates, safe havens, countries that are safe havens, why money is stuck in safe haven countries, etc. Okay, so you, you can understand the reasons behind fundamentals because uh, patterns all all patterns and um, technical analysis is really to give your entry and exit. Uh, the fundamentals tells you the direction. Okay, so if you want to talk to one of the guys here, please do. You can also email me if you want to have a chat. Uh, you can get uh, to their emails there and uh, you can call us directly if you wish. All right. Let's have a talk about your questions. Okay, Richard Lewis has uh, brought up a great question, and this is asked all the time. Are these results shown on JCO5 and JCO7 net of the performance fee? The answer is no. The uh, I, I show the gross fee uh, because uh, typically if we get uh, institutional funds or um, uh, fund of funds uh, contributing or allocating us uh, money, we will give them maybe a 20% or 15% performance fee because they're putting in usually more than a million dollars, sometimes five mil or 10 mil. Uh, for retail, um, it sits at 30% um, uh, because that's what we've decided to do. So if you want to work out what the, um, what the performance fee is, Take your average. Let's just call it. Let's call it. Let's call it thirty percent. All right. You put in a hundred thousand dollars. You um, you make thirty percent, which will be three hundred thousand dollars. We will take 
30% of that $300,000. Okay, simple. Okay, yep. All right, more questions, guys. I'm sure you've got it. Questions. You can go to our website and have a look at the performances on the front page there as well. Those performances are um, uh, through FX Blue, which is the verification. Okay, Diana has asked a question: uh, Do your trades do do you trade these patterns? on your managed accounts. Yes, JCO5, we certainly trade these patterns. Absolutely. Um, uh, Gok Fu Wu. Has asked the question, where do you sign up? Just sign up on the website, mate. Go to the website or give us a call. Drop us an email. I'll get uh, one of the boys here to give you a call tomorrow if you want to sign up. How did JCO7? JCO7 lost about uh, 3% on the uh, US election. JCO5 broke even. We broke even. Okay, so Robert has asked the question, how did JCO7 and JCO5 do in the US election? Um, so we uh, broke even and we lost about uh, seven, uh, 3% on JCO7. Uh, how did we go with the Brexit? Uh, Brexit we switched off. We just weren't, we weren't participating in it. So um, we didn't, there was no result there. So there's obvious, there's a, there's a couple of other webinars that we've done based on, um, based on risk, et cetera. So um, uh, I encourage you to watch that and what we do with tail risk events, et cetera, which is very important on how we, how we deal with it um, and how we risk, mitigate our risk because of such events. Um, we decided to trade on JCO5 and JCO7 during the US election. Um, however, we got caught, I mean, have a look at it. I mean, you guys saw it. You've, you've all got charts. Here we go. Let's have a look at the euro. You can see here, up, we were, we were steaming along. We were probably up about 5% um, up here. Uh, but it then just turned over and just, just unfolded altogether, um, which is... It's just the way it goes, I guess. But we didn't lose too much. Certainly recoverable. No, we don't just monitor the trades. Okay, so the question is: Is do you just monitor the trade, uh, or do we just let them go? So no, we just we don't monitor. The, we we do monitor them, but we do trade them as well. Okay, so we've got. Uh, a couple of algos which trade for us, so that'll pick up the entries, but we manage them as we go on, okay? So once we've got the entry, we also manage. Uh, our risk per trade, somebody's asked um, how much risk do we, uh, how much do we risk per trade or, you know, during our trades? We trade very small. Um, the total leverage or the total exposure on on our trades at any one time is no more than five to one, right? Five to one is quite small for FX. A lot of people get greedy, etc. You know, you, typically if you're a novice, um, you will overexpose yourself um, very early by using, you know, one, two lots on a $10,000 account, which we don't do that. We use five to one, so maximum 0.5 of a lot on a $10,000 account is where we'll go, okay? And we've got a mandate which we, you know, will we'll, uh, not go any further than that. And also what we'll do is we will uh, exit the trades uh, if there's news announcements or critical announcements that are coming out which may uh, increase volatility, which is outside of our comfortable zone. 
No, we don't trade by ourselves. Somebody said, do you do it all on your own? So no, we've got, as I said in the web, in the earlier on in the slides, let me go to it. Uh, we've got participants or guys in the US, great quant analysts, which uh, look after JC07 as, as well with us. So we've got 24, the, uh, 24 hour a day monitoring of JC07. So both uh, myself and our guys in the US developed JC07. Uh, that took us around about five years to put together and a lot of, lot of hard work. There is a video on JC07, I encourage you to watch it. Um, uh, guys in Young London uh, and Johannesburg uh, trade, as, uh, as well with myself, trade JC05. Uh, the UK guy does um, a lot of the sterling trades and base that on news announcements. Uh, our South African guy is a, is a short-term trend trader patterns like what I do uh, and I, I do the same as what our guy in South Africa does. So there's there's quite a few um, smart people in the room um, who look after it and we've also got um, um, a couple of guys here who you probably already know, uh, Toby Pignol and um, Mike Campbell who um, you, you'll typically talk to on the phone. Okay, more questions. Yeah, oh, somebody's asked, can you can we come and see you uh, and the team? Yeah, sure, just drop in whenever you want, no problem. We're here uh, during the week all the time, so you can come in, just let us know when you're going to come in. Okay, any more questions from anybody? Any more questions? Looks like everybody, all the questions have been answered. Uh, there was no questions to do with the harmonics, so I must have um, must have answered those harmonic questions pretty well. That technical analysis that was pretty good. Okay, if you do have questions, I'm open to um, I'm open to you guys. Um, uh, Gordon's just asked us a question. J JCO seven has bigger drawdowns than JCO five. Um, yeah, yes, it does. Exactly. That's why we've got a larger standard deviation in. Let's go back to the standard deviation. Here we go. JCO5 has a standard deviation of 5.5, 5.05, and JCO7 has a standard deviation of 9.37. Okay. So uh, you, the answer is correct. The JCO7 has bigger drawdowns. Our max drawdown in JC. Um, 07 is uh, from peak to trough is uh, 26.9, 27.9, 26.9. Uh, JC05 is looking here on my chart 19.8. Okay, 19.8. So yeah, but we're trading derivatives. I mean, that's this is typical for derivatives. If you don't want any drawdown, don't trade. <laughs> That's pretty much how it goes. All right. Hopefully I've answered your questions there, guys. Any more questions before we finish up? Okay. I think I'll leave it there. All right, guys, if you've got any questions, just email us. I'll be I'll, happy to um, share with you. Uh, or answer them. Uh, also, if you've got an idea for a webinar that you would like us to do, we're also open to that as well. Uh, look forward to seeing you at the next one. Um, we will email you with the date and the time, usually 6.30 at night, but we will email you with the date of the next one. Okay, guys, thanks a lot. See you later.